Hola, mi gente linda, and welcome to Panavision, the Todo So Flow podcast that brings you all local stories, news, and music with your a little bit tired, but definitely here hosts, <laughs> Aneri Clari, with you on this beautiful uh, Sunday, Saturday, Saturday, morning, Saturday morning, the co-founders of Panamia Club. Yes, Panamia Club is a collective that's making supporting local creatives and entrepreneurs the easiest finding a messy meme on on instagram right now definitely <laughs> every episode will bring you a locally based find to discuss what they're doing in their community and will also highlight a local musician but this episode's a little bit different right yes so today's episode we're going to be doing a little something a little bit different because we have a really really cool guest for you guys really cool which is of miami <laughs> we're going to be doing something uh, that is different because, you know, as you know, we usually have a main guest and we have a musical guest, but today they are actually the same. We're going to be talking to Vanessa Coy and then Bosito independently before we talk to the two co-founders of Witches of Miami together. Yes. But before we get to that, Glani, how you doing? Doing What's good. Up? Doing good. A little tired, as you said, <laughs> but excited. Both of us woke up late, I honestly, today. <laughs> <laughs> but we're I, I texted Annette, she didn't respond. I was like, she's definitely asleep. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? But we're here. You know what? We were out. We, we had kind of a late night. Okay. You know, yeah. like in all honesty. Yeah, it's the hustle. It's the hustle. But we're yes. here now. Um, and I'm really excited to be talking about um, all the local panas that we got this last couple of weeks since we lost it our podcast oh my god so so many and we kind of are going to try to do it a little bit rapid fire because when i tell you it's like how many there's about 50 there's long. about 50 vana. <laughs> okay okay so let's do it 10 no 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 five four three two and go okay we have glow fitness they are a pop-up and a studio offering dance and fitness classes over in miami Beach. okay next we have eddie sal uh guy's name is gabe he's a young ecuadorian bilingual urban music singer and songwriter rapper and producer yes then we have sensitive who is a dj okay and we have also <laughs> fast walker which is a south florida rock alternative band cool then we have jorge rodriguez uh, a filmmaker and photographer based in miami they write direct edit produce all those things then we have barry or abyss uh, and they're a digital artist really cool work also, we have Eastway, another four-piece band, alternative punk and grunge and post-hard rock band. Then we have Dee's Realm. So Dee's Realm is an artist, is an artist. There's a lot more to it, but it's an artist. Um, an artist. All right. Then we have also Sadie, who is also an artist, a multimedia artist, poet, and student of mathematics. That's really cool. That's cool. Then we have Misidia Vintage, which is an 80s Y2K vintage clothing, accessories, and toys based in Dania Beach. I'm really excited about this one. Underbelly Magazine, our first publication. They are a new magazine popping up in Miami. Yup, yup. Yes, so exciting. Yes. Featuring food um, in Miami. And they're open for applications. So if you have an artist, you do paintings of food, just apply. Incredible. Yeah. Alt food. All, yeah. all the food. 100%. I'm, I'm <laughs> so for that. Uh, then we have Divine Nectar, which is natural fresh fresh juices uh, in the Miami area, and they're also a hub for events such as community block parties, networking opportunities, <laughs> and a safe space to connect with like-minded like individuals. Yes, and we have our friend, Loki Star. Loki Star, uh, you've probably seen them in the scene. They're yeah. one of my favorite performers. No, and they're a cutie pie. Yeah, they're cute. They're so nice. Yeah. Uh, then we have Luca, a creative director, designer, and recording artist. Then we have Odingi, also an artist, primarily digital artist, producing prints, art books, comics, all that stuff. Yeah, shout out to Diago. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> next, we have La Malara, which is a uh, MCR resident, right? MCR, Miami Community Radio resident, just like us. They're a singer, songwriter, a, a singer, writer, producer, and creator. Yeah, she was just on the show, Blueprint show last night. Then we have the Cutting Gallery. We're really excited about this one. They're based out of Broward, and it's actually a space that uh, functions as a barber uh, shop and then also as an art studio uh, or an art gallery. So, yeah, definitely check it out. Yeah, I personally live like in Miramar, so it's like two minutes away from me, and it is genuinely so cool to have an art space like that way out in the suburbs where I live. Um, but next we have Ruby's Records and Tara, which is definitely a friend of the podcast. Philip, which is kind of literally behind the desk right now. <laughs> Um, it helps, uh, they sell records with Ruby and then they also do tarot readings. So whenever you see them at an event, definitely 
definitely get that tarot reading for sure. I can <laughs> for sure. All right, then we have White Rose Coffee. Um, and if you have heard of Ocho Placas, the tattoo shop, um, it's a really cool space. It was over in Coral Gables. It functions as a coffee shop and also a tattoo shop. So definitely check it out. It's really cute. Um, they also have local art on the wall. It's a cute place to to. to There's work. a lot of these panas that we can give personal recommendations. Yeah. And White Rose Coffee has our personal recommendation. <laughs> it's a super cool spot. Then we have Maroon Isle, which is a theater production company which was founded last year. They write their own content, film their own work, and market talents to the masses as professional storytellers yes 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 and we have artsy jam a miami-based freelance artist and school teacher specializing mainly in portraits and caricatures then we have mental gardens jewelry born in fort lauderdale best known for fern rings and flower earrings Cute. also we have heartlines they are a photographer based in miami capturing the underground music scene then we have sonified uh, which is my boy Anthony, pop rock band based in Miami, perform upbeat, danceable songs with a hint of nostalgic, emotional lyricism. We're really excited about this one. We also have Skateboard Miami. Yes. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so if you haven't heard of them, they are a uh, skate park open here in Little Haiti offering classes, and, and it's just a cool hangout spot. Yes, really, really cute. Then we have Temple Wynwood, which is a new barn in Wynwood, uh, looking for new collaborative opportunities. Um, then we have Fatties, which Woo! is a, yeah, I'm excited about that one yes. too. Yes, a Miami collective hosting events centered around bigger bodies and in inclusivity. Yes, and we have also our first realtor, Marlene Perez. Uh, they, she specializes in Broward County, so if you're looking to buy, sell, <laughs> rent, invest, definitely hit her up. Oh, also, yeah, I'm a realtor too, so technically we have two realtors. <laughs> Then we have our second tattoo shop, Timeless Craft Tattoo Gallery. They're actually located in Broward in Coral Springs, and they do, they've do they been open for 20 years, so definitely go check them out. Yes, and we have Cold Rat Pokes, a uh, tattoo artist based in Coral Springs, works at the Timeless Craft Tattoo Gallery, which is actually something we love. Yeah. We love getting tattoo shops and then also all the artists in the tattoo yeah, shops. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> for sure. Then we have Quiet Coffee Roasters, which is a pop-up coffee roasting uh, shop yes. over in North Miami Beach. They're really cute. Yes, yes. And then we have Oh Honey Sushi, fabulous pop-up shop uh, where yes. they offer specially sushi rolls and quick bites. Also a personal recommendation from me. <laughs> yes. Also, Juice for Your Soul. They're located in Miami-Dade, um, offering fresh juices, 100% uh, fresh pressed juices, fruits yeah. and vegetables. Awesome. We need them. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Juguito for the summer. Yeah. It's 100%. so hot. It's so hot. <laughs> that's, that's like one of the biggest things that I crave from like anywhere in Latin America. It's like, I just want juice. Juice. I just want. Good juice. You know, partita, uh, like mora. Every, all of them, all of them. I was, what were we talking about? Weird hybrid okay, house. Hybrid house brews. <laughs> coffee, coffee and beer. Hello. It's a coffee and beer place in Kendall. A hybrid, if you will. Uh, yes. Then we also have Witches of Miami. Yay. We're going to talk to them a little bit more later on. So you'll find out about them then. 100%. And then we have Kale Cali Home Bakery, delicious vegan and non-vegan treats. They focus on using quality ingre ingredients, mostly organic and local when available. They, we also got the Plantisserie, which yes. I am excited about because they are delicious. It's mm -hmm. vegan food, but it's just like prepared from scratch daily, super clean ingredients. It's delicious. It's like literally down the road. So if you live in the you know, little Haiti area, definitely check it out. That was all Claudia's description. Yeah. Because she <laughs> describes plenticerie often. <laughs> then we have Daniel Gaitan, born and raised in Hialeah, and is, I, I assume, an artist. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. 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 Um, then we have Cordy's Cookies, which we met at uh, White Rose Coffee. Sometimes now, th these days, as we like continue to Very grow, we're just, serendipitous. Like, yeah. Um, but they make really delicious cookies. And the cool thing about them is they're gluten free. They're free of like all the allergens, um, really clean ingredients and not super sweet. So um, definitely check it out. Yes. And then Suro Tattoos, another tattoo artist in South Florida, specializing in fine line, floral work, Mandela realism, and especially pet portraits. I'm liking that we have more and more tattoo artists so that we can like offer all the different types we of tattoos, like traditional, like all this realistic. How many tattoo studios do we have? I think three at this point because it's easy peasy and uh -huh. then timeless craft. Uh -huh. And I think there was another one. I don't know, but we have a, commu a growing community yes, of tattoo artists. A collection artists. of tattoo yeah. artists. But we got to catch guys. them all. Love oh. you guys. Yeah. <laughs> 
Um, then we have Despy Clothing. Um, they're cool. They make clothing from 100% recyclable and upcycled fabrics. And right now they're specializing in kids' clothes, um, but they're going to start moving to other um, other clothes as well. So. Then we have Ketamine, a uh, DJ and graphic designer, photographer, and artist based in Miami. Yes, and we also have Top Deer. They're a pop band uh, located in, in Miami. And Jolt Radio, online radio station focused on getting electric music and content to your ears. They support local, national, and international independent mm-hmm. artists, producers, radio hosts, and DJs. Shout out to Jolt Radio. They give a platform to a lot of my, my personal friends. All right, then we also have Corruption MIA, which is run kind of by Ketamine. They throw these amazing um, queer and kink parties. So the next one is in July. So mark your calendars. Yes, and then we have Jasimi Collective. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Uh, but they are a clothing brand that takes a minimalistic and sophisticated approach to luxury streetwear. Shout out to Jose. Yeah. Thank you for joining us, Their stuff is really, love. really cute. I've seen them in Unseen. Yeah. They're good vendors there. Um, then we also have a tune, a tune energy. A tunergy. A tunergy. Uh, yes, a tunergy. Um, they f- spoke focus on aromatherapy, sound healing, products, and services. Then we have Juan, who is an artist. <laughs> Welcome, Juan. <laughs> <laughs> we also we also have the Tree Johnson. <laughs> Sorry. <Yeah. laughs> um, they create feeling through the screen. So they're actually an actor. They're our first actor. Really awesome. excited to have you, Detree. Yes, welcome, Detree. We have Walimica Fitness, um, Miami-based personal training company. We offer they will offer one-on-one personal training, small group training, and outdoor classes. And if you don't know them as that, they're also five hundred one or three hundred five kettle bar, kettle bar, kettle bar, like the kettlebell. I don't know. Sure. <laughs> sure. <sport>. Sure. <laughs> then we also have Issa Martinez. She is a pole dancer based in Miami. Yes. yes. First yes. one. First one. <laughs> she performs at events and also teaches private classes. So yeah. personally excited about that one. Awesome. We have Marte, which is also, I think, a, a MCR resident. If not, yeah. Yes. Awesome. MCR resident, also known as Mariquero. It, <laughs> I just got that. I just... <laughs> I'm not translating that. Uh, Venezuelan artist, photographer, musician, and creative director based in, in Miami, Florida. Excellent, excellent. Then, excited, we have our first plant shop. So we have Mrs. Fresh Cut, a local houseplant stylist. So let her style your plants. Yes. And then Self Sacred, offering classes to expand young minds, families, and caregivers to the world of holistic health, spirituality, mental, and emotional awareness. Then we have, finally, another yoga teacher, but this is different. It's SUP tropical yoga so yoga on a paddleboard paddleboard <laughs> yoga <laughs> nice you yes. try it maybe okay all right well, yeah. well <laughs> maybe we should try it take the video uh, behind the scenes yeah no sure <laughs> i'll be behind the scenes and then you yoga teacher can be trying there. the paddleboard okay, stuff okay okay, okay, okay okay well well that puts us at 234 panas so on track for our goal of 300 panas in our first year as an organization yes. Aww, Aww. so thank you everybody for joining us thank you um, for and helping thank you us for sticking goal. around for like all of the explanations <laughs> if you did <laughs> hope we didn't lose you come back if we did come back <laughs> Yeah, so like Annette said, thank you everyone for joining. If you want to join our locals directory and our collective, um, it's easy to join and it's free. All you got to do is uh, send us a DM and we'll send you the form. It takes about five, ten minutes to fill it out. You all good? Absolutely. And of course, as always, big shout out to Jen and Jeremy, who are developers that are helping build our website. Um, So, yeah. That was all the panas, but we're not done because everybody knows it's very important to stay educated in what is happening in our community. And luckily, Gladie and I are here to keep you updated on lo que está pasando en SoFlo. With the segment, Meanwhile in SoFlo. Yes. So, Meanwhile in SoFlo, uh, Jay, our friend Jay Khalil, has put together a playlist mm. called Blueprint and Friends. And so if you're a local musician and you want to um, be on that, reach out to him. And then also if you want to learn more about the, the uh, musicians in the community, you can check it out on Spotify. Um, and then also, like I said before, Underbelly is releasing their first um, edition of their magazine. So if you have um, content that you think is in alignment, go ahead and reach out to her. 
Awesome. And then uh, coming up on June 22nd, we have karaoke with a live band. Yes. So one of our new panas, yes. top tier, will be facilitating a live karaoke event at Gramps. Mm -hmm. So this is your chance to live out your front person dreams. That's really cool, actually. Yeah. That's really cool. Mm -hmm. And Gramps is like such a chill spot for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we love Gramps for mm -hmm. hosting these cool events. Um, and then, yeah, so on June 23rd, I'll be there. It is Witches I will of Miami's Fem Prom event. <laughs> so <laughs> we're going to be there. Yes, it Our is. Our friends are going to be exactly. there. Exactly. <laughs> the theme is Candy Perreo. All right. So start thinking. Yeah. The Creatively. Concept. Yeah. I, you know, you know, I already like come up with my fits like yeah. three days in advance. I know. So <laughs> I, it's like already in the works. Then on June 23rd, also on June 23rd, um, for at Artisan's Playhouse, mm -hmm. our dear friend Empana Yesi Makes Art is going to be hosting a stamp making workshop. So that you, if you've ever want to make your own rubber stamp, your own insignia, to I guess like you know put like a stamp signature at the end yeah. of all your love letters to your secret lovers. This is a place not to just letters, stamp your clothes. You can stamp. True. You have true, your true, signature true, true. stamp that you can stamp anything with. So yeah. Definitely uh, try to go there. And then um, on June 25th, um, Thola Yoga um, is hosting a celebration. She's commemorating another year of growth and wellness. So we have a couple of panas that are going to be there for that celebration. It's on the 25th and then also at Legion's Park. So Black Brew is going to be there. There's going to be sound and healing, um, all sorts of cool stuff. And I love Legion Park. It's so pretty. Something that is becoming more of a common occurrence is to see like events formulating in the community that involve like so many panas in the organization and it's so beautiful to see yeah and we always are willing to shout out for you guys so again if you ever need something that you are promoting to to help like be disseminated out into the community let us know mm -hmm. we'll definitely rep it yeah or we'll get excited for you the amazon like to actually put it on the podcast too and con of like with 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 like con confianza con confianza yeah so like just know that it's cool um so then in club news What's actually happening? <laughs> Guys, it's so much. We are working on a lot. But um, first and foremost, yeah, this good is news. probably the biggest news. Yeah. We are a 501c3 nonprofit organization. Yay! Mm -hmm, so what does mm -hmm. that mean? It means that you can, we can actually apply for funding and grants and sponsorships. If you have any recommendations, please let us know. Mm -hmm. But also, it also means that if you are looking for a fiscal sponsor, we can, you know, apply for grants and stuff on your behalf to maybe fund whatever projects, it is. Events, projects, events, projects, events. Things that for you the have community. Yeah. <laughs> like we know that we can't do it all. So if you have a project that you want to collaborate with us to that you need us to make it happen, yeah, you can just come through. It also means that you can donate to us and, and get and get a tax deduction. Benefits, so, right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> just just throwing that one in there. Okay, so our next uh, piece of news is that you just went to the Peace Studio. Yeah, so yeah, basically, basically, uh, there was um, this program called Artists as Catalyst, which um, other friends in the community have actually been a part of, uh, like Drew and um, Sam, um, and and just like a a few other people that are you know creating here. Um, and it was an incredible program. It was an incredible program. I definitely, they're going to have it again next year. If you see it, like definitely consider applying. But it was an incredible program that basically facilitates a lot of creativity and it puts you in a room with many other actors and creators in the community that are just spectacular and it was a, a beautiful experience. So shout out to Ale and Claudia, which were the directors of um, the my Artists as Catalyst at the Peace Studio. And, and thank you again for such a wonderful experience. All right, here's our last, our last two bullet points. Our show for the 30th is now sometime in July. We'll have an, uh, an actual date for you a little bit later, but we've actually postponed it because we wanna flesh out the idea a little bit more. We wanna make sure that we're um, moving with intention and with purpose. Um, and so we're moving forward with this, um, with the name, I don't know if I'm going to say the name. Can I say the yeah. name of the event? Okay, yeah, Piñagria. So, Piñagria. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So the event is going to be uh, called Piñagria, and it's a angry pineapple, as you as you can see and visualize. <laughs> <laughs> But we want to focus on the experiences of first and second generation immigrants and then talk a little bit about the um, or have like collaborate with um, organizations that maybe um, have 
uh, support immigration and support um, immigration reform. So yeah, we'll have more details for you for you a little bit later. And then also mm-hmm. in July, we're gonna host um, a Club de Pana at Artisans Playhouse. So big shout out to them. Yes, and we'll have a date for that as well sometime mm-hmm. soon. Yeah, definitely stay tuned for details. So that's it. For Meanwhile in SoFlo, and if you know of anything, any interesting news that you want us to bring up next time, again, please don't hesitate to DM us. And now that we're all caught up with community things. we're all done. (laughs) We're good. (laughs) Promise. (laughs) It is time. It is time to bring out our dear friends, our new friends here, which is of Miami. We got Bosito and Vanessa. Vanessa. Welcome. Welcome, 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 welcome. Yeah. You can come into the shot. Scootin'. <clears throat> Hi. Hello. <laughs> Hi, Megan. Thank you for having us, guys. No, thank you both so much for coming on. Mm-hmm. We are... And on such short notice. Yes. Thank you, literally. Yeah. <laughs> on such short notice. We're really big fans yes. of what it is that you do. And, you know, I might like sit and gush here for a minute, but we're not gonna, <laughs> we're not gonna start that way. Um, I just wanted to, to again, welcome you to the podcast and say, and, and just, just, just thank you. Thank yes. you. Nah, thank you. <laughs> Definitely <laughs> thank you for creating this space. Yeah. Yes. It's really cool. Really. It's really cool. Like hearing you shout out in so many people, like it's very important, I think, here in Miami, because there's so many things going on and curating like a specific, um, yeah, like type of people that you are shouting out. It's most of them are are friends too. So it's very like (laughs) emotional to like hear them too and also being part of this. Oh, <laughs> that's so sweet. <laughs> what a great compliment. <laughs> Definitely, we were in the background with every name, like, yeah. <laughs> we're like, yes, shout out on their belly, shout out <laughs> ketamine. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, no, definitely. Uh, but yeah, I wanted to just like go ahead and so we're, we're basically going to be almost like interviewing a little bit separately mm-hmm. and then we're gonna we're gonna like ask you both about which is Miami okay. but just to start off I wanted to to um, basically ask you Bosito mm-hmm. right hi Bosito hi. how are you doing my love <laughs> I'm good thank you how are you <laughs> great great um, can you tell us a little bit about yourself damn like about myself in general yeah just in general just a quick introduction. Yeah. okay um, so I'm Venezuelan. I moved here six, almost six years ago. Yeah, almost six years ago. Um, I was not into DJing at all before that. I've always been into music. Like I did classical ballet for like 12 years. Wow. I had like, um, you know, like I took like musical lessons and stuff, but never did it as a career, let's say. It was always like a hobby. And then like being here in Miami and seeing like all the opportunities that Miami gives to creatives um, kind of like opened my uh, mind to maybe pursue music as a career. So yeah, COVID hit. I was like unemployed. I was like, what am I gonna do with my life? I also work in hospitality. So as we all know, none of that was working out. So. I kind of had to like figure something out and DJing. I had a friend teaching me how to DJ already. So I was like, let's just try to see how this goes. So I started to stream with like Vanessa and other friends on Twitch, you know, like because we thought we would make some money out of it. We didn't really, but you know, we tried. (laughs) What? (laughs) We tried, um, but that for sure opened like an opportunity for me to build a career with DJing. Um, I was putting myself out there on the internet, which is very hard for me, like doing this right now. You don't know how like nervous I get like with cameras and microphones, especially Vanessa knows. I cannot even like (laughs) in our parties, it's like, oh, like say something on the mic. And I'm like, no, don't do this to me. Don't do this to me, I can't, but we're here. And and things again. No, no, yes. no, this is really cool. Thank you for giving us the space. Um, but yeah, what happened is basically when things started to open up again, 
um, I started to get booked because I was building a platform already. And um, yeah, after that, everything history, like we, I started to uh, DJ in a lot of places, especially like Latin parties. And now, like I feel that my range of music is pretty like wide. So I can play like different parties and yeah, it's pretty fun. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> Incredible. And I've also been seeing that you've been you've been traveling. Like you've been like doing gigs like in other places in Puerto Rico, I think I yes. saw. Yes, yes. Um so that Puerto Rico gig was very much like a last minute thing. Like I was already going to Puerto Rico and I a friend of mine was there and he's like, Listen, I just went to this spot and it's pretty cool and I think you could like play there just hit them up and see what's up. And I'm like, okay, I guess let's do this. So I did it. I did hit up the space. It's called El Nie in Puerto Rico. Shout out to them. They're a real ones for putting me on like super last minute. I was like, hey, I'm gonna be there. Like, I don't know. I was there for like five days and um, they were like, yeah, I bet. Like, come, we'll have you. And it was, it was really cool. It was really fun. I also DJ in New York and Chicago. Um, those are the cities that I've been able to like perform, which is really cool. Oh, and Houston, right, 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 right. Oh. Houston too, my family lives there, so I go a lot. So I started to build connections over there too. So we'll see how that goes. And um, how did the crowds compare? <laughs> you know, like, I'm, I'm just like curious, right? Miami and New York or Miami and Puerto Rico. So Miami is special. I'm not gonna lie, like I love DJing here. It is challenging for sure. Um, people in other cities kind of like, like, mm, let's put it this way. I feel the crowd in Miami, it's very picky. So it helps you build like a good, um, like you have to bring something to the table for people to be like, okay, I really like this DJ, I really like this music. If you play like top 40 here, people don't really like it. I'm not gonna say that in Puerto Rico or Houston, it's like that, uh, but it is kind of like an easier crowd, let's say, like, I don't know how to explain it, but also in these other cities, I haven't been able to play queer events, oh. which is what I love the most. Yeah. So let's say that I'll I'll prefer the Miami crowd without a doubt. It's mm. it's more fun. <laughs> and is the is the set different in the crowds that aren't like queers like specifically? Um it depends cuz if I get booked let's say for a um, um Latin party, mm -hmm. you know, like I play a lot of and if I know it's a straight party, I know they <laughs> like a lot of like Bad Bunny and you know, like <laughs> the basics. But if I play a queer perreo party, I can play like all of my underground music that it's like, uh, you know, like Isabella Love Story, Miss Nina, Gunichonga, like the real OGs, um, reggaetoneras. That's, nice. that's what I like the most and that's why I also love to play queer parties. But yeah, I will say like it is a little different, but I still have like my uh, signature sound somehow. So yeah, I kind of like play what they want, but I also play what I want and build up the party like based on that energy. <laughs> That's really cool. I have to listen to one of your sets these days. Yes. I remember the Puerto Rico one specifically because Gladi was in Puerto Rico around that time, but not like right when you were oh, playing. Oh, I yes. see that. So I was like, I'm oh, so is he playing in Puerto Rico? And I'm so, so sorry. It's fine. It's fine. Like, it was pretty fun, but it was really chill. It was like a Wednesday. So honestly, like, Puerto Rico, people in Puerto Rico go party on the weekend. It's not <laughs> yeah, like in it's Miami. True. <laughs> Miami, like, you go on a Wednesday to a bar and you find, like, a good crowd and you know, people wanting to have fun and party, but it's not like that everywhere. That's why I say like Miami nightlife. Miami is truly the city that never sleeps, <laughs> I think. I agree. I'm taking agree. the crown from New York. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Don't tell them. <laughs> yeah. Um, but you, you were talking, a, just like one last question, because you were talking a bit about how you're your sound is evolved, has like evolved, you know, which is natural for any artist, right? 
but and, and that like for spe specific audiences you have like one sound over the other so i guess my my question is is kind of like where is that where does that like a ver, i'm trying to like organize the question it's kind of like where does the distinction come from in your head like where is the where does the curation because you are a curator that's what djs always are yeah so like where do, where how does that skill kind of develop i guess i think with practice honestly like in playing for different crowds if you play for the same crowd over and over again like you already have uh, an idea of what to play and you kind of like get comfortable and stick to a specific type of music or a sound. So I have been blessed with the opportunities to play with many different parties. Like I've played hip hop parties, I played reggaeton parties, I've played uh, house parties, I've played uh, uh, baile funk parties. So um, reading the crowd for me is a skill that I've learned to develop with time. Like I've been DJing for almost three years. So I think, yeah, like um, you learn on the field, you know? There's a lot of people that have really good taste in music, but the moment, in the moment of truth, they don't know how to read the crowd and they kind of lose the crowd. And part of our job as DJs is bringing energy to the people and receiving the energy that they're giving us. That's it's like, you know, it's a give and take type of thing. So yeah, I think with time and um, energy and yeah, I don't know. It's so <laughs> funny, you said time and I was like, time. Because <laughs> yeah, <laughs> all these cute little yeah. watches, oh, yeah. I love yeah. them. <laughs> yeah, this, this things, everyone's always like, yeah, your watches. It's from a uh, girl that, it's Venezuelan too, her name is Blichival. She makes really cool jewelry, yeah. So I have always been trying to get into the Venezuelan arts alt scene, but it is like not super, I don't know where the inn is. So maybe you can. <laughs> Venezuelans, um, I don't, I think my, yeah, my, my f closest friends are the, are the Venezuelans I know. I don't really know a lot of Venezuelans in the scene. I mean, I do, but I, I guess I'm not close to them that much, but yeah. We're out there. <laughs> I see. I know that they're out there. I just, I just, yeah, I need to find. I found you. So <laughs> we're here. We're here. We're balling. <laughs> okay, well. All right. Well, thank you so much. Well, thank um, you. Now we want to ask Vanessa. You're a creative director, right? Yes. Okay. So how we want to know a little bit like more about your story and how you got into that, um, how long you've been in Miami for and how it's kind of evolved. Totally. I have been in Miami for six years, mm -hmm. um, and I think... Oh, I same time, like six years, yeah, six like years. Yeah, I think Daniela was like a little months after, right, mm -hmm. that I got here. Did you meet like very quickly once you moved? Like, No, but <laughs> I'm going to tell the story that we Daniela hates. We'll get to the story, we'll get to the story eventually. the story that Daniela hates. That no, is spoilers. How no spoilers, no spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, here she goes. But <laughs> Daniela and I actually went to the same high school. And we met there, but we were not friends. I was oh. like, mm, I kind of like her. She hated but me. <laughs> I was judging Daniela by her friends. That was, that was the truth. But that's definitely not who is Daniela. I apologize many times already. <laughs> 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 I learned my lesson. <laughs> now she's like my best friend, ride or die. Like, I don't know what I would do with Daniela now. Um, but. We were not friends in high school, but we knew who each other uh, were. And then like, I don't know, three years until living here, we uh, met again to a friend. He had a show, he was my friend. Daniela recommended him like for the show. And then we saw each other and actually she was working like two blocks from my house and we were like, what? And then I needed to move from my house and Daniela told me there was an apartment in her building and now we have been neighbors for two years. Yeah. And mm -hmm. the rest is history, literally. Just, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's really cool. Uh, mm -hmm. 
Can so about you, uh, your yeah. Oh. Yeah. yeah, I'm yeah. like, yeah, our friendship. <laughs> <laughs> that happens. So, to me. Um, I think my interest for visual arts in general started as a really early age. Like, I think I had my first camera when I was eight years old or something. Like, I asked, like, Niño Jesus, can you please bring me <laughs> a camera? I want to be a videographer. Yeah. I don't know what I was thinking. I mean, I was like, Barbie videographer. Yeah, I want to be that. And, but, uh, and my parents actually gave me like a Kodak camera, a film camera. Mm -hmm. Like more than I could take pictures of the family trips, but I was just taking pictures of like the dogs, like rivers, and they were like, here please take pictures of the family. And I was like, no, I'm more into this. <laughs> but um, I had many cameras and I think that's something that I was always passionate about, but also always seemed more like a hobby, you know? Mm -hmm. That's something that you can do as a hobby. Right. And then I was like, okay, then maybe I wanna be a doctor. I actually went to medicine school for like one year and then two years into nutrition and dietitian school. And then everyone, I think everyone knew, I was the only one that didn't knew that I be belonged to art. Aww. And then everyone was like, why is that blue hair girl here studying like in medicine? <laughs> I was actually not going, not gonna lie. <laughs> I was going to my friend's classes in the art like department or school. And yeah, I think through friendship to my friends, like, um, highlighting me and telling me you're good at this you could do this you like forget about like the hobby thing forget about like not believing this could be your career with something that you love so much right so i wanted to study like graphic design in venezuela something that it it um covers like several areas like you see like design but you also see photography or you also see art you also see like um it's very complete i didn't finish because i moved here but I was like two years, almost three years, and that's when I was like, whoa, so this is how it feels, like learning and doing something that you really love. And I was like, there's no way back for me. I, I moved here, I was hospitality working, then I did corporate working, and I was like, for me it was always um, a way to like, oh yeah, I'll do this like half time or part time and then I'm gonna become became serious in this. And it was like two years ago that I was like, I no longer can do like half and half. It is really not helping me develop and fully commit to this. And that's like, I started like um, helping Daniela with the Twitch because like she needed help with the visuals, with like the mm. recording while she was DJing. And then it became like, oh, I, I wanna do this. I love this. And then it, we started like setting up the backgrounds, like making it a vibe. And I think that practice also helping me to um, understand that I was not only a photographer or a visual artist, but uh, a director in the sense of like creating a space and understanding how that will change um, the vibes. And I feel like you, that is just a skill mm -hmm. that is just so incredible that you have, you. Yeah. <laughs> not only through the work that you, you have doing Witches of Miami, but I, I have also seen like on your, on your Instagram feed, like just the way that the artistic direction behind some of the photographs that you're taking is just incredible. Oh, thank you and so much. And it definitely is like, wow, que calidad, you know? <laughs> yes. I appreciate that, but I also have to like highlight and, and shout out the people that I have taken pictures of. Um, I always said it like to, to friends, but I think I will be like, my pictures will be nothing also without uh, the witches and the people that I'm taking pictures of. They really have an essence. I think they, they come to me um, thinking that I'm gonna make them look certain way. And for me, it's just like, I see them like that and it's just highlighting the best of them because they are super talented, they are like, beautiful and it's just basically showing my perspective of them and not vice versa no that's, that's incredible no i'm gonna cry I'm gonna <laughs> <laughs> <No>. <laughs> don't tell me i'm being cringe <laughs> no, at all. so when it comes i can ask you a million questions about this because you know like as an artist myself that's like what always interests me and the those are what i what i always want to know more about um so like when you have a subject 
kind of like the artistic direction that you have like towards the photography is inspired by the person in front of you? I'm asking. Okay, so uh, usually I ask like, what, what do they want? What is the purpose of this? So we can aim to that. Um, but it's more like, I think it's a conversation, conversation between both like um, the personality of this person already and what they want to project. And then I'm like, okay, I'll show that in my way, but what, what you want. But let's say the process, it becomes a little bit intimate because I really I like the person to feel comfortable. And that takes a little bit of time. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> That's not like, okay, yeah. stand there, pose, move here, da, 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 da. Especially if they're not a model. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Which you will be surprised. Because they can model. <laughs> <laughs> they can model. Like, I have seen the difference between like doing boots and pictures in Witches of Miami and doing in other places. And I'm, I'm not trying to throw shade here. <laughs> but queer com queers come prepare. <laughs> they come to the liver, they, they serve, they serve, they do, they already know they the give. angles, they have practice at home, like, and then I go to other places and I have to beg people, like, I can't just stand there, can I take a picture of you? And they're like, yeah. <laughs> and I think it is, it is, it is a trust thing, like, they already, like, we trust each other. But even with, with people that I don't know, I try to, People have asked me like, oh, do you picture when you have like your photography studio, like, mm -hmm. you know, like this space. And I'm like, actually, I do know like that's ideal, mm -hmm. but I do like the idea of having my studio at home mm -hmm. because I feel people are, get very vulnerable. Like for me, it's really hard to get in front of the camera. <laughs> like everybody's like, oh, but who takes your picture? And I'm like, nobody, <laughs> nobody's taking my picture. Don't worry about me, I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> so it is very vulnerable. And I think they, they come here and they are showing me this vulnerability and I also want to like, you know, show a part of me. So they feel it like reciprocate. Mm. So I do like the idea of having the studio home and like building a connection beyond the photographer. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> no, thank you so much, Vanessa. <laughs> Um, and I think now we, we kind of like can Just start. Talk about what you're yeah, doing. yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah. like, let's let's get into it. Let's yeah. get into it. Like, tell us. Um, tell I, us how it began. Yeah, how it began. Why witches? Mm -hmm. Because I feel mm -hmm. like when people hear witches of Miami, it's a very like, it's it's really interesting <laughs> because for me that's like that's how you you filter the cool people. Yeah. <laughs> Literally. Because, like, literally. I hear it, and I'm like, ah, I'm a witch. Like, literally. Yeah. <laughs> I also love that you made it, like, your local coven. Like, literally, it is. <laughs> like, doubling down. <laughs> yeah. If like, be scared. Yes. Yeah. Be scared. <laughs> be scared. <laughs> um, do you want to, well, I'll say something. Um, so, we basically started as a little friend project, let's say. We were, like okay, this city doesn't give us what we need uh, nightlife-wise. Uh, we, did, we didn't see femmes highlighting, highlighted in spaces. Um, I was already DJing, so we found um, our, actually our home base, which is Mama Tribe. Um, they gave us this space to do the event, so we're like, okay, what are we doing with this? Where, what, what are we doing? Because we already know since the beginning that we want this to be special. We didn't want this to be just another party in Miami. Mm -hmm. So uh, we are witches, literally, mm -hmm. you know, like, um, so we thought that we actually had a different name before. That's yeah, a funny that's story. The blood twist. Yes, that's a funny story. <laughs> we had, our name was Witching Hour. Okay. Ooh. Right? Because, I don't know, that's what we came up with. And it seems like there was an event, like, not a party, but like a, like a show or something. Uh -huh. It was an event. In yeah. Fort Lauderdale uh -huh. uh, called Witching Hour. So they started sending us, like, threads. email threads telling us that they were going to sue, sue us if we didn't change the name. Wow. Let me tell you, we just did one party in that moment <laughs> wow and yeah. they they are like nope no 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 no. and i'm glad honestly because yeah. i feel that this name fits us better mm -hmm. like because we are building this in miami mm -hmm. so um so yeah our goal was always highlighting femmes highlighting bipoc and trans folk 
folks. So, um, yeah, that's yeah. basically how it started. We proudly are a queer femme led collective. For us, it's like started as a party and then became a collective. It yeah. was not just like us. We wanted to have people that we could like, you know, always come again to, to work with us and to keep creating that space. And we knew, um, as I told you from the beginning, that we wanted this to be special. We had no idea it was gonna like be like this, uh -huh. you know, like, or as fast, let's say. We didn't know it was gonna grow as fast and that people were gonna connect with our concept so quick. Um, what is fast for you? Like, what is what has the timeline been like? A year so and a half? we started we started in October 2021. Wow. We had our anniversary party in October 2022 and like we were like damn like we've been doing we have our community already yeah. in one year and we still like get new people, new faces every party. So that's very special, I'm not going to lie. Um it's very it's a humbling experience because we we don't do this from a space of again this is Oh, we're trying to make too much, so much money out of Witches of Miami. We're trying to do so many things with Witches of Miami, but it's always comes from a community space. Like we were craving for community, and we have a community now, so it is it is very special. I'm not gonna lie. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. I I can definitely relate to that. Yeah. I think that um, it takes a very special secret sauce yeah. to see <laughs> like just like kind of a vacío, like a like a, a lack of community, and then just being like, you know what, I am I want to curate that space. Mm -hmm. um, so congratulations. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> thank you, thank you. How has the project like evolved? Like where do you see it going in the future? Which is a Miami TV. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, yes. that's like an yes. inner joke. Inner Everybody's <laughs> like, how do we watch, where do we watch this show? And we're like, uh, I guess okay. in our building, <laughs> because that's where we live and that's where it happens. But uh, um. yeah, no, I think which is in Miami, like we have, we're ambitious in the sense that we wanted to grow more and we want to like make a lot of people feel what we have been creating. So I think basically we want to do it all. <laughs> yeah from because since we not only do the parties we always we are also trying to build like a platform where we do like workshops we have done workshops about like racism and white supremacy and how to tackle that as hispanics yeah, as and white privileged people and uh we also want to do like other workshops uh with witchcraft and mm -hmm. you know like trying to we want to give to the community too and i our, i feel our way is with our skills right with the the things that we know how to do which is videography music and uh creative arts in general so yeah i see my i see which is in miami being like a really big project and we already have so many people like helping us and supporting us and collaborating with us so let's see how it goes Speaking of those collaborations, mm -hmm. this is a uh, because you know we are um, we're like basically two creatives that came together and we're like, all right, we want to do this thing. How do we do it? And you guys are two creatives that had an idea and we're like, okay, I'm gonna do this now. So how how was that transition for you guys? Like, because uh, you know you can start putting in on events and I guess in the beginning it's like it's not too hard you find a venue you promote it on Instagram but as it goes on it becomes more of an operation yeah. so how was that transition oh that was kind of hard but not like it was hard in the sense that we saw how which is was occupying more and more time of ourselves. So we're like, wait, wait, wait. So this is not becoming going to work one event. This is becoming working the whole month towards the event. So we sat down and we basically tried to divide our responsibilities. So we felt that it was fair for both of us. Yes. And we like agree how much we were gonna like time and put into like, so it was hard in the sense of seeing that, but in, also, it was not hard because we are super passionate about it. Yeah. And even though we try to set up times and to not talk about it like all the time, we're like, no, no, text at 3 a.m. talking about it. But it, that doesn't happen. We end up talking about witches all the time. 
yeah. all the time. <laughs> and that's it. Like we're having soup and having a meeting. Like we're traveling. We're like, this would be a great idea for witches. Yeah. So it was like more of a process to organize it and make it like protocols and have like the responsibilities divided. I think basically was the most. But besides that, it, it comes very natural for us. Also, I feel that, um, uh, like Vanessa said, which has started to take so much of our times, and we felt the responsibility with the people that goes to our events to keep doing it. There was a moment yeah. that we were like, um, you know, like, are we gonna keep doing this? Like, what's gonna happen? Are we gonna like, what? Where is this going? And People would tell us like all the time how comfortable they feel and how special it is for them. So we're like, you know, this is beyond us at this point. Like what we, Chatter. which is, it's not Posito and Vanessa. It's like One and two much two. more than that. And just the thought of us not doing it anymore for whatever reason is like, it's not possible. It's not possible. Like yeah. I see, I feel that um, it's very special what we built. So we gotta like keep, keep on doing it. And as she yeah. said, like just learning to separate somehow, like the time that witches takes from us and our time as friends and neighbors and family basically at this point, we're still working on that. I'm not gonna <laughs> lie, as she, she says it all the time. Like we're always talking about it, but we, we've learned how to like not talk about it, at least when we are, I don't know, with our other friends. And we're like, nah, 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 yeah, but yeah, nah, 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 venue, nah, nah, DJs, yeah. and our yeah. friends are like, yo, Come we're on. supposed <laughs> to hang out, like, the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, working on that. Wow. <laughs> Shout out to our friends that, <laughs> yeah, that, always, that. <laughs> they're always listening to our bullshit. I should not curse. No, no, you can no, curse. You can curse. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm not going to lie. Everything that you just said kind of hurt. Like, yeah, for <laughs> <real>. <laughs> You're like, hmm. <laughs> So we also struggle with that. We're like, <laughs> no, not now, not now. It's three in the morning, yeah. and we're like, what's with other people? Um, yeah, it's just like, oh, you want to talk about that now? Okay, 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 cool. <laughs> okay, bad, 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 bad. Yeah, bad. No, but you no, know no. that like it's for the like it's for your growing. Something. And it's creative. And, it is yeah. creation. So you're like. Damn, but this idea is coming right, right now. now. Yeah. Yeah. It's coming right yeah. now. What do you do with that? Like you can yeah. write it down. Yeah, that's yeah. that's the best option, I guess. Yeah. But I don't know. But when I you have know. a team, yeah. When you have a team and you talk about things, it's like it flows so much better. Yeah, yeah that's honestly what we love to do as well. Like just brainstorm, like and the ideas just follow um, yeah. and grow. Yeah, and sometimes they do come like in a smoke sesh at two in the morning, yeah. like. Totally. <laughs> it's, we're vessels. So at, at the end, it's like, how do you not, like, try to, how do you keep, like, it could come differently later. It could, you cannot remember, like, exactly the vision that you had. You can write it down to, to not forget, like, as Osita says, we're like, okay, right? Like, even if it sounds stupid, <laughs> we're like, write that down. <laughs> three, three words. No, but when, like, the little piece of your brain that's, like, running the Panamia drive for, like, oh, hours and hours and hours, when it decides to, like, oh, oh, no, we're going through a rabbit hole of ideas now, like, <laughs> it happens. Yeah. Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> They're not alone. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I really loved what you wrote, like, in your description about, um, you know, including multi-dimensional, like how you created this multi-dimensional femme space. And even like you guys have been around for two years. Um, there aren't that many people still like that have uh, any other organizations like within the space. There aren't that many. The first time I ever heard about you was I was looking up like lesbian clubs in <laughs> Miami on Reddit. And they're like, none, but witches of Miami. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> Yeah, we're not a, a lesbian event, but we do highlight multidimensional femme identities. What we mean by that, we actually uh, did a campaign last year for Femprom. That it's, yeah, because yeah. this Femprom is our second Femprom, the one that we have on June 23rd. And even in that moment, we didn't really know, we didn't know, didn't know, 
my yeah, you English is it's okay, it's okay. <laughs> um, we didn't know in that moment what femme meant to us. So what we did is that we kind of got together with people that go to our parties and friends of ours and did an interview. And we're like, listen, uh, first of all, we got together, we talked about what femme meant to all of us. And obviously all of us have different perceptions of it. That's why we say it's multidimensional because there is no way to describe what fem means, period. But what we kind of came up with talking to all of our friends was basically like fem means whatever it is out of the male gaze, you know, like um, especially in the queer community, the word fem is very important to like identify yourself as something and you can look a certain way and still identify as femme, like one thing has nothing to do with the other. Like you can look strong and like, you know, have strong um, aspects, not aspects, like features, fe features exactly, mm -hmm. or dress a certain way and that doesn't make you less femme if femme is the identity you feel comfortable with. So, yeah. Or the energy that, that you protect that you want to, like, or that empowers you, like, Definitely femme is, is an energy that it flows in all of us and we can connect as much as, as we feel like with it. Um, and that, that was also important for us to see in others. Incredible. And to highlight like in our crowd, like we do, when we do ladies night, we never do ladies night. It's like drinks for yeah. everyone. It's inclusive. Ladies it's inclusive night. because we cannot police who right. is a lady. Like right. who is a lady? No, all of us could be ladies if we want to, you mm -hmm. know? So yeah. Thank you so much. And um, what I, just like, because we're gonna run out of time and I wanna make sure that we get to our next segment, yeah. um, but incredible, and just what you're doing is incredible. Yeah. We're fans. Thank you. Thank you. We're fans. Thank you. We love it so much. I've only been to to one, uh, which is a Miami event, and it was the Garden of Eden. Garden of Eden. Oh, beautiful. And yeah. I was, was like, gorgeous. I could do not. Personal favorites. Yeah. I tell everybody that it was the most fun I've ever had clubbing in Miami. Oh, I, I love that. It was incredible. It was a very cool, magical <laughs> night. It yeah. was beautiful. <laughs> yeah. For us, it was one of our favorites, too, for sure. Yeah. And the performance, Maybe. like, yeah. Just wow. Everyone ate. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Everyone ate. It was crazy. Yeah. <laughs> okay. But yeah. So the next segment is called Keke. And so we asked a couple, or we asked on Instagram for people to submit their questions. And so we got okay. three questions um, from our followers. Um, so we just want to ask them. Yes. Or maybe your followers. It could be. Yeah. <laughs> could be, could be, we don't know. <laughs> so the first one is from at Rachel.gz. And they ask tips on making friends because they just moved to Miami alone a week ago. <laughs> just come to witches. <laughs> like, no, honestly, okay. honestly, our crowd. Unapologetic. <laughs> yeah, it's just right in front of you. <laughs> Shameless the whole time. plug. <laughs> Shameless plug. No, no, but no, being for real, our crowd is very welcoming. Yeah, totally. We have a lot of people coming alone to our events. And, uh, you know, I don't feel there's like a clique culture in our parties. Obviously, people that have gone since the beginning, mm -hmm. they know each other and stuff. Yeah. But if you come with an en with a good energy and ready to like dance and ready to talk to people, it is pretty easy over there. I understand like we have a lot of neurodivergent folks coming to our parties. So, yes, yeah, like, so <laughs> it's like, you know, you can always find a way. You can always talk to someone. And we always encourage people to come, even if it's alone, because we know for a fact that they're gonna feel comfortable. Yeah. Also with the ru the house rules we have of no, no homophobia, no racism, none of that. Like we implement it really, really hard. So that makes it easier too for people that don't feel comfortable in going alone to spaces because of that, because they don't feel safe in the spaces. So I feel that witches is a very safe space and a very cool place to meet new people. That's yeah. definitely one of the reasons why I said that it's the most fun I've had. Because I also felt like I didn't I didn't really have to worry. No, mm -hmm. definitely I think 
Like everyone that goes to witches, you can be either like a trick away from making a friend or like even when I'm taking the pictures, like everybody starts hyping up yeah. the people in the boot. And that's for me, it's like, it's the latest thing that I've seen is so beautiful because you see how people change when they're like, you know, hype by the same energy for people that you feel like you can relate to. So even if you're shy, you can definitely feel comfortable in the space. Also, Vanessa and I don't hesitate to kick out people that are making anybody feel uncomfortable. Yeah. We don't even ask questions. It's like, who? <coughs> who? <laughs> because, you know, it's so hard. It's so hard for someone to come to you and exactly. tell you it is. Mm. Um, I feel uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. So you have to listen to that. And we we're very strong on that. We're like, what's happening? What, like we go directly to the person and we go with security and it's like whatever is happening is gonna stop or you're out like we give them the opportunity but either ways it's like no we don't accept any type of like harassment any type of nothing just if you're not kind you're out so that's very as i said before i feel that that makes people feel very comfortable so i encourage Incredible. people to come even if it's alone Amazing, amazing. The second one is please drop some outfit inspo for Femme Prom. <laughs> we Not will. Really question, but we will yeah. today on our Instagram. <laughs> we will. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we have so much content that we haven't posted about uh, Femme Prom because we've been so busy. We're also posting the Queer Icons campaign that we've been working on really hard yeah. where we interviewed like a lot of people and we're still posting those videos. But we will post yeah. um, from Inspo, I promise. Yeah. That's also my job. There's <laughs> also a, a shoot that we did, a special shoot from people that are going to the event. And that's going to be definitely inspirational enough wow. because yeah, yeah, yeah. they ate. They <laughs> ate wow. those outfits. You'll wow. see that. You'll yeah. see that soon. Oh, my God. I can't wait. <laughs> uh, and then the last one, but by the way, I, I, I saw your campaign and... We're not going to have enough time to ask about it, but <laughs> yeah. definitely check it out when yeah. you see it come out. And then, uh, so the next question is from Swan Eye. What is your dream oh. DJ lineup? <laughs> so you're a half and I'll say my half? Okay, yeah. <laughs> um, DJ Spell. Mr. Bitch. Bosito, obviously. Obviously. Um, <laughs> well, Tokisha. I know she's not a DJ, but... We'll throw, we'll, I'll teach her like a few, a few <laughs> tricks <laughs> so she could DJ for us and yours. And mine are uh, not DJs neither, but <laughs> I would love to have Bijan Antillano, Antillano <laughs> in her parties. Yes. <laughs> wow. And we have a DJ that uh, we have, like I personally love and will love to have is Magnolia Poradis from New York. Hopefully okay. we can bring them soon and <laughs> made it part of the dream lineup. <laughs> yeah. Trying to make our dream lineup come true. <laughs> uh -huh. Actually, Rio Bamba was kind of someone, like yeah. the one that is going to be playing in in Femprom. It was someone that we were like, oh, one day and now. Yeah, and it's, happening. it's the day. <laughs> it's happening. Now is the day. That's but so yeah. Beautiful. I love that. Oh my gosh, she's so excited. So <laughs> excited. <Yeah. laughs> well, uh, this has been Keke. Uh, so if you have any questions for the, an upcoming episode, please DM us on Instagram or on Twitter at BanamiaClub.com. Dot com at Panamia Club. Excuse me. <laughs> um, and yeah, and if you enjoyed this podcast um, and you want other people to find this podcast, please give us a shout out uh, and review on Spotify, Apple, wherever you get your other podcasts. Yes, pues. Dale right, mi gente. Y con eso, we conclude this live episode of Panavision. Thank you again, Vanessa, Bosito, for coming on. And join us not next week. The, uh, yeah, next no, week. No, Friday. Yeah, Come by on Join us Friday. next Friday uh, to learn more about your local creatives, entrepreneurs in South Florida. Also, come by on Friday for Femme Prom. We will be yes. there. Yes. We will be there. Yeah. <laughs> Tickets are very cheap, okay? Go get them in Witches of Miami. Yes. At Witches of Miami. At Witches of Miami on Instagram. Also, uh, we don't deny like accessibility for anyone that doesn't have like for like if you la are lacking funds and you are BIPOC or trans folk, uh, please DM us. We are not like denying entry if you can access, but we also encourage people like to buy the tickets because that's how we can pay everyone too. But if you still don't have the funds, please reach out to us. We don't want you to miss like queer joy. Absolutely. Well, thank you again, guys, and, and bye, everybody. Bye. bye. <laughs>